Hello and welcome to Should You Play, a series where I pretty much do a mini review on a game I played and tell you if it's worth your time or not. Now, I would like to apologize for this episode taking over a month to come out, but I assure you I have my reasons for this kind of delay. Stuff like health issues, school, and the unexpected re return of my brother, etc. have been holding me back. But I'm hoping to get back on track with videos soon, so um, look out for that, I guess. Anyway, with the unrelated real-life notes out of the way, on today's episode we'll be taking a look at Alpha Runner by Lights Out Games. So, what is this game? Alpha Runner is an endless runner game where the obstacle is to get as many points as possible while going through the stage. Die and your points reset on top of you going back to the very beginning of the stage. That's as best I can describe it. The game has various modes, such as Normal, which is your standard fair endless platformer, MLG, which, on top of having one of the cringiest names imaginable for a game mode, is essentially the hard mode version of Normal Stages, basically imagine the Normal Stages on crack, a Speedrun, which is just a stage where you have to get the end of it without dying and not being slow enough for the floor beneath you to just disappear, and practice, where you can uh, just practice controlling the game, getting used to the mechanics and that kind of stuff. Uh, the game also has multiple playable characters, such as a character that runs faster, a character that jumps higher, a double jump character, a character that attracts the diamond shaped objects you need to collect to progress, and the regular average Joe character that has multiple skins, but he doesn't have any special abilities, other than the fact that he can jump. More on that later down the video. With my unnecessarily long overview on the game out of the way, let's begin with the positives. The first positive I'll give for this game are the graphics. It doesn't have much going for it, but having complex graphics doesn't usually mean the game is better. And for this one, the simple graphics it has are quite appealing for the type of game it's trying to be. So I think Alfrunner looks generally nice. The next positive I'll give for the game is the leveling system. While it is purely cosmetic and doesn't seem to offer any kind of reward, it adds some sort of replay value for those people who are interested in seeing how much they have progressed since starting the game. And as always with every single other video that I make on this series, the third and last positive I'll give for Alpha Runner is its difficulty. While from the outside perspective it looks like it's not that difficult, you know, something that everyone can just jump into and play. But I can assure you that that is not really true and this game is not for everyone. The game requires almost pixel perfect precision and challenges even the most agile players. I mean, I beat Super Hexagon six times, I played Open Hexagon for over a year and I'm now currently running my third year of playing OS, yet I still struggle to get 10 points on this game consistently. It's something like Super Hexagon in terms of difficulty basically, um, it's easy to learn but it's very hard to master. And naturally, let's begin with my three negatives for Alpha Runner. The first negative I'll mention is the control. Yeah, it's not so great. For a game that requires you to be pretty much pixel perfect with how you do the jumps, the controls feel unexplainably stiff. In the speedrun game mode, it outright feels unresponsive. Alright, look at this example right here. It looks like I just ran off the edge without even jumping, right? Wrong. I was actually hitting the jump key, but turns out, the jump key in that moment turns off the prompt that tells you what you need to do in the stage, causing many unexpected deaths like this. The next negative is the soundtrack. Now, I'm usually very easy going when it comes to video game music. As long as it sounds sort of nice, I'm willing to give it a pass. I'm sad to say that not only does Alpha Runner have an incredibly small selection of just two songs, but those two songs, which are the main menu song and the gameplay song, they are very, very, very forgettable, not leaving any kind of impression on the player. Now, I get that they're trying to go for a this is just background music, focus on the game instead approach with the soundtrack, but I can't help but start feeling bored when listening to this game's soundtrack while playing. 
It's not as energetic as something like Super Hexagon, I'm sad to say. Wow, this is the second time I've brought up brought up the fucking game in this video. Am I sure I'm not reviewing Super Hexagon again? And just like with every other episode, the last negative I have for Alf Runner is the fact that character selection is determined by RNG, or random number generator. For a game like 100% Orange Juice, which is dice-based, it works, as in the entire RNG concept. For an endless runner, it does not. You get comfortable playing a certain character, but then you accidentally fall off the platform, and then guess what? Not only are you going back to the beginning of the stage, but you're also forced to use a character that you possibly don't like, and you have to constantly go off the edge just to get the character you want again. An RNG-based character selection shouldn't be in this type of game. Give us a proper character select and design stages around those specific characters, or just stick to one character in general. An RNG character selection like you're doing in Alpha Runner isn't a good idea in my opinion. So, should you play Alpha Runner? Well, in my opinion, no. Yes, it has appealing graphics. Yes, it has a leveling system for those who care to see how much we have progressed since starting the game. And yes, it's easy to learn, hard to master, which could be appealing for some types of people. But the stiff controls, boring soundtrack, and RNG-based character selection that this game entails just makes me drive people away from this game. If you're not paying more than 50 cents for this game, then have a go at it, I guess. But anything more than that, and you're not really getting your money's worth. There are better endless runners to play. Stuff like Melody's Escape I hear is pretty good, and I'm not sure if this counts, but Super Meat Boy is better than this game. But no, I don't think you should waste your time on Alpha Runner unless you're just getting it on the cheap and you can't afford something better. Thanks for watching.